The Russian occupiers have a task to capture Kurakovo before the new year, but it will be a meat grinder for them. This was stated on air by the Ukrainian military political observer of the information resistance group Alexander Kovalenko on Kiev 24. He stressed that worsening weather conditions have never stopped Russian occupiers. Now, when they are forming the southern flank of Pokrovsk along the right and left banks of the Volchia River, they are, among other things, creating conditions for an offensive on Kurakovo. And after Volodar was captured, now all those cabs that statistically flew to Volodar began to fly to Kurakovo. That is, this city is being prepared for further offensive and assault actions by the occupiers. Therefore, Kurakovo is really under maximum threat now, the expert noted. According to Kovalenko, Kurakovo has defensive lines and in addition, there are quite good relief and landscape features near the city which create natural obstacles for Russian occupiers. But when the Russians start working on Kurakovo daily with dozens of cabs and destroying our positions, reducing the capabilities of our borders, then nothing can stop them. And one way or another, they will approach Kurakovo at the appropriate distance to have a total advantage in fire damage. They are already trying to do this through Ostroy, putting pressure on Maximilianovka, Ostrovskoy, Alexandropol. That is, they are forming a northeastern flank to Kurakovo in order to have the ability to influence it from several directions, Kovalenko said. According to him, attempts to capture Kurakovo will cost the Russians even greater losses than they had during the attacks on Ugladar. On the one hand, they have a goal to advance very quickly and capture Kurakovo. In fact, by the end of the year, this is the goal. But there are quite a lot of obstacles to doing this in a timely manner or with minimal losses. In the Kurakovo direction, they will have huge losses. No less than in Ugledarskoy or along Kramatorskoy in the area of Chasov Yar. That is, for the Russians, it will be a meat grinder. The encirclement of Ukrainian defense forces, as the expert assures, is impossible here because there are at least two logistical exit arteries from Kurakovo, which the Russians cannot cut off. In his opinion, the general trend of the creeping advance of the Russians will not change until Ukraine receives all the weapons that it requests from its partners. Kovalenko noted that the Russians managed to develop the occupation movement in the east since October 2023. At that time, the enemy was advancing on Avdiivka and Chasivyar, and this was a period when Ukraine did not have enough military assistance from its partners. The Estonian government has already held discussions and debates regarding the possible scenario of sending their military on non-combat missions to Western Ukraine. This information was officially confirmed by the head of the Ministry of Defense of Estonia, Hanno Pevkur, according to Polish radio. He also emphasized that no one has made a final decision yet as the country's authorities are very concerned about the safety of their instructors in Ukraine which is constantly under attack from Russia. If we had a large contingent, say a bridge-sized unit with equipment, it would be a very big target for the Russians, Hanno Pevkur noted. The head of the Defense Department also reminded once again that the decision to introduce troops to Ukraine should be made by consensus of NATO member states. In addition, official Tallinn wants to take into account absolutely all nuances. First of all, it is about force protection measures as well as logistics. Therefore, we are currently continuing our studies in Poland and Great Britain. Let's see how this topic will develop. Hanno Pevkor said, The catastrophic failure of the Russian Blitzkrieg in Ukraine, which resulted in huge losses for the aggressor in a 30-month meat grinder, convinced other neighbors of the Russian Federation of their ability to resist a possible Russian invasion. This is written by the American magazine The Hill. The publication notes that according to Western estimates, Russia has lost about 200,000 soldiers killed and 400,000 wounded in Ukraine. Losses in the main types of military equipment are also astronomical. This, as well as Ukraine's success in the Black Sea and deep strikes on Russian military facilities and oil refineries, inspired other neighbors of Russia, in particular Estonia. In mid-September, Chief of the General Staff of the Estonian Defense Forces, Major General Vahur Karus, told Estonian media about a change in the country's defense doctrine. 
In the past, the plan was to hold out for 10 days before the country was occupied by the Russians or saved by reinforcements from NATO allies. Now, the Estonian army has a completely different plan. This is because of the changes that the war in Ukraine has brought to many NATO allies. We can no longer wait to be hit over the head with a sledgehammer, but we have to be the ones who can do certain things first," Karus said. The Hill interprets these words as Estonia's intention to preemptively invade Russia if relations between the two countries reach a boiling point. According to the authors of the publication, if Estonia thinks so, then Latvia, Lithuania, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, and perhaps several other former Soviet republics, feel the same way. The publication notes that the Estonian army, which can deploy 60,000 personnel during a war, is quite capable, with NATO support, of implementing something similar to the Ukrainian operation in the Kursk region in the Russian border area. In a word, Putin has brilliantly managed not only to reduce Russia to the level of a second or third-rate country, but also to surround it with potential enemies, the publication notes.